Amen, amen. God bless you, family of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you, family of God. It's your brother DJ Sam Rock, and we're here on the Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're watching the live, we're a little bit early, but the 10 p.m. podcast will be at soulwinnersinaz.org, so you can tune in, listen, download it for free, and I'm excited. That first thing that you saw if you're watching the live, you know, this last week, I posed a question, and I put a question online. And I thought, I don't know, call me, you say that I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I thought social media was social media that you could literally go on social media and post questions, post, share it, and join groups and everything else like that. And it seems like because I got over 40,000 responses and I re reached over 40,000 people just for the question, Facebook sent me a message today that they're going to punish me for seven days. I won't be able to share on the groups. So I need you to do me a huge favor and share this Blaze Baba study. Share it on your socials. You know, don't go crazy sharing. I don't want you to get blocked e either, but at least share it to at least five friends, family, whatever, uh, and groups. If you're in groups, share it up to five times. No more than five because it seems like that's the magic number and I got in trouble for it. And what am I spreading? Am I spreading like um, some kind of, you know, wrong thing or I don't know. All I know is that I'm being penalized for seven days. And tonight we're going to be in James chapter one, verses five and six. But before we get there, of course, let's pray. And tonight we're going to be talking about, let me see what it is again. If you need it, I know I need some things. I know you need some things. So let's be honest with ourselves and, and admit that we're needy people, right? And God... He's aware of that anyway. But if you need it, from James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, and the question is, what do you think is the most important thing to pray for? What do you think? Not what I think, it's what do you think? That's more um, of the question term, in terms for you to answer. I'm going to answer it myself, of course. Uh, I just don't want to get, you know bumped off of another social media network just for sharing the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if I do, it's okay, right? Because I have friends that out there that's going to back me up. They're going to share past episodes or whatever until we sort all of this out with the social media giant. Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the listeners, for the viewers. Right now, I pray a supernatural hedge of protection over every single person who has said yes to Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, for every single person listening, that you would teach them, show them who you are, reveal yourself, Lord Jesus, to them, so that they too may know the saving, matchless, holy, righteous power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, increase in all areas of their lives and of my family's life as well. And I pray, Lord God, that every single person that connects with the Blaze Bible Study will receive a supernatural blessing, uh, health, strength, protection before 2020, before the new year, Lord God. And I pray this by faith, knowing that you're able and that you're willing to do what you said in your word that you would do. And we ask, we seek, we knock, because you asked us to seek and knock. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen, amen. So James chapter 1, let's go to the scriptures real quick. So that way we could get into this. Because if it's not the word of God, then I'm just babbling. If I'm babbling, then I'm wasting time. If I'm wasting your time, you know, you could change the channel or change, go to something else, YouTube or whatever. And also, by the way, the YouTube, I probably will have to resort to that as plan B. Just to take this over to YouTube for the lives. I'm not, I'm not going to pray about it because um, I'm not going to be anxious about anything the Bible says, but pray about everything. And then he will provide the answer, the guidance, and everything that's necessary to live this thing out. So James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. If you need wisdom, and I know I need wisdom. You need wisdom probably too, right? If you need wisdom, ask our generous God. And he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you. He will not punish you. Seven day ban off the social media. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him. Be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty. Is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. 
thrown and tossed by the wind. So when you ask, God is not going to be like, why are you asking me again? And, and get away from me. And now I'm going to rebuke you. God is not that type of God. I don't know if you thought my God, my Lord and Savior, the God of the Christians, you, I don't know if you thought he was like that, but he's not like that. According to the scripture and all throughout the scripture, he's not up there just waiting to punish us for spreading a message, his message, as a matter of fact. He's not ready to ban us from social media, from websites and online. He's not... Um, out there just telling us to be quiet and let people who say they're saved just let them be don't touch them don't bother them it's not the god that we serve the god that we serve is a god who could who could really answer all our questions he's able and willing to do that he's not afraid he's not surprised by our questions as a matter of fact you read the book of job job asked some questions but then god told job okay gird yourself up like a man like you know Okay, brace yourself like a man, God said, because now I'm going to ask you this. The you know he asked Job some questions, which you know when that when those questions started hurling around, Job's head was probably spinning because there's nothing that I can answer God, nothing Job could answer God that God didn't even know, already know. You know, all creation, everything we see and everything we don't see, God created that, and everything that um, God created belongs to God. So it's pretty much everything, you know what I mean? We run out of options real quick or when, it, when it comes to sharing what we own and what God owns. I think that's an unequal battle because God owns it all. Amen. So if you need wisdom, this is a time that we need wisdom. You know, this is a season of open doors. And it's also a season that we should be seeking God for wisdom because there's a lot of things happening. A lot of situations, people's lives are being changed, transformed, renewed, and also people's lives are being destroyed. There's an enemy out there that hates all of God's creations, not only Christians. We can't be going around saying the devil's after me only. Devil's after anybody that is created in the image of God, which is 100% of us. Uh, you know, I was having this conversation a couple of weeks back. And, you know, I understand that there's people tampering, scientists tampering with life forms and trying to duplicate life or, you know, trying to make clones and everything. I understand that. I also understand that if it's life, it came from God. If it's altered, then man altered the life that was already created by a living and holy matchless God. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Lisa. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's put you up here. Amen. Praise God. And let me put you up here so that way we can see what you said. Thank you for this transmission. Much needed. Amen. And you're, if you haven't been following Pastor Lisa, amen, she does some lives that are incredible. And you need to check her out and be friends with her as well and her family and her husband and her church because they do lives. They do prayers. They do services. Amen. And I'm blessed by her lives as well. Amen. But we need to band together, Pastor, because now they're starting to block more and more of us uh, so for spreading the gospel. And um, we know in the spirit, connecting right now with yours, you know why they're trying to, you know, mute the mouths of all the Christ followers. But we don't have to stand for that. We have dominion. God said we have dominion. And we're going to spread this message, whether it's on this giant of a network or giant of a platform or another one. But we're going to spread the gospel message. I already got in contact. I'm blocked right now, banned for seven days for connecting with other groups. I can't connect right now with any other group outside of my own groups and outside of my own pages for seven days. And they gave me a good number. Seven is a good number. <laughs> so I'm asking God what to do next. Amen. So whatever God wants me to do. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Amen, Pastor. So we're going to do this together. Uh, if you can, please share this with at least five of your friends. I don't want nobody to get in trouble for sharing this video. Amen. Or this live or this podcast. But if you can, up to five people, I think you'll be okay. Um, I reached over 40,000 people last week with a question from the scriptures. And I was I was encouraged because um, people really wanted to. They had questions about the question and they had answers for the question. And then I guess because it got so much traction and went viral and all of a sudden, I'm banned now for seven days. This is the third time this happened to me. I did something with uh, one of my online businesses as well through Facebook, you know, just following the guidelines, making posts and doing what everybody else does, comments and posts. 
and it reached like 20, 30,000 people and they banned me for that as well. Um, and then the first time I forgot what it was, I guess I put up a link that they didn't like and they banned me. But amen. If there's no persecution, that means we're not doing something right. So if there's persecution, this means that I'm not doing anything wrong in the eyes of God. I'm doing something wrong in the eyes of man because they don't understand um, the goodness of God. And why would they fight against any minister of the gospel if they truly knew the God of the Christians, Jesus Christ? Amen. So let's go to James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6 again. Let's, let's read it one more time and let's key in on some things. First of all, if you need, that's a question, right? Um, I'm needy, yeah. And if you're honest, you're probably needy as well. So if you need, it's a question. Ask our generous God and he will give it to you. Now, what are we asking God for this season? In this season, I'm asking God for wisdom. In this season, I'm asking God for faith to be increased in my heart, to for courage. Because, you know, every time before I leave these doors and before my wife leaves these doors, anybody leaves these doors uh, um, of my home, amen, I'm going to be praying for health, strength, and protection. We need health. We, we need health to our flesh. We need strength for our bones. And we need protection from the evil one and for evil people who try to shut us up. And um, I was Ubering and doing the lift earlier today. And I met a, a gentleman. He was a Vietnam vet. And he just got news that he, because of the, 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 the chemicals that were sprayed on him years ago, he's been dealing with health issues. And now they're saying it's turning into some kind of cancer, leukemia. And he told me right away, and he's an older gentleman, he said, I don't want to die. So I agreed with him. And I said, I'm going to ask God right now that you will not die, that you will live, and that your body will obey what God has the word and this prayer over his body. And he agreed. So I'm believing good things for that man. Amen. We had a great conversation. It was like a 45 minute to an hour drive to where I picked them up to where we were headed. Amen. God is good. So listen, uh, he will not rebuke you for asking. Now, I'm a human being. Hopefully you're a human being. And if you're an alien, like I always say, you're from another planet. Jesus is Lord over your planet too, because there's no other God but him. But listen, if you ask me a question, uh, it's a question and not only a question, is a person answering, asking the question. A person that's asking the question deserves to be answered like a person. Not like a, a subject or object or a thing, but a person, a human being created in the image of God. Someone who was um, given life the way I was given life. Someone who was given life the same way you were given life. So let's be kind to one another. Amen. The rebuke part, yeah. Um, that's another Bible study. But yeah, we're supposed to use the word to correct, rebuke, exhort, encourage, you know, to show. It's the basic instructions before leaving earth, the word of God. And it's also our instruction manual to live this Christian life, to live it out. As a matter of fact, I dare to say that we can't even live this Christian life other than Jesus Christ living it through us and in us. Amen. So we, we're not alone on this as Christians. But we do have to follow what God's instructions say, his manual. Amen. And everything in God's word is good. There's bad news in the gospel, though. The bad news is what? The bad news is that if you don't believe in Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, if you reject the gospel message, if you, uh, you know, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, if you mock our God, which is, God got that covered too. He said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. But if you're that type of person doing all those type of things because you have a lot of excuses why you don't trust God or why you don't believe in Jesus being God or why you don't believe in Christianity and all that that goes with it, then the Bible says truly and honestly that you're putting yourself in a bad situation, that you're putting yourself, positioning yourself to go to a place separated from God for all eternity. Not that God is up there in heaven or in a Holy Holy Spirit, guys, in every single believer, rebuking you for asking questions and sending you here and sending you there. You know, the question that's so popular nowadays is why would a good God allow evil in the world? Or why would God, a good God, put people, innocent people or good people, the way they frame it, and send them to hell? You know, so it's questions from questioners people who have questions. So we answer the person, you know, we could deal with the situation. It might be something that you and I learned that's far-fetched. It's not even the word of God. 
before I got saved, I could have, I could have, you couldn't tell me that those who help themselves, God only helps those who help themselves. You couldn't tell me that wasn't in the scripture because I, I heard that growing up in my family all my life until the point where I got saved and I started reading the word for myself. Man, I wish I had a, a, like a light bulb to light up above my head right now because go figure all those years listening to quotes that people said that was in scripture. All I had to do for myself was pick up the Bible and read it for myself. I don't know what what was the difficulty in that. Is that I was distracted. I was thrown off. I didn't want to do it. And I was just trusting in what people say. Now the good thing about God. Like this question. What do you think is the most important thing to pray for? You know that's a good question. Some it might be finances. Some it might be relationships. Some it might be a health issue. Some, it might be just getting more into the Word of God. Now, I posed this question uh, literally on Facebook, got in trouble for it. And, you know, for another question I posted, got in trouble for it. And the answers were incredible. And the response was incredible. Like I said, over 40,000 people responded within like the weekend. And I was like, oh, glory to God. You know, people were encouraged, involved. You know, there was a couple, a handful of people that, you know, wanted to curse me out and, you know, laughed at the question and rebuked me and said I was this and that and a third. Other people said to take that down or whatever. But out of 40,000, over 43,000 people actually, and only like a handful of people that were, you know, not being honest with themselves and trying to take shots at the person who asked the question, which was me, you know, there's always, you know, a bunch out there that want to go against the tide that want to, you know, cause some kind of disruption or distraction or are actually being used by the enemy himself. And they will probably don't even know that. Amen. But we pray for them too, uh, that, that God will enlighten them, that will, God will give them eyes to see, ears to listen, and courage to ask God the question as well. Amen. It's okay to ask God questions because in this life, there's a lot of stuff that happens in life that you'll be like, God, why? And God is okay with that. I know maybe there's been a system, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that were taught that we can never ask God questions. But the big problem would be is the book of Job when he did, you know, the disciples asked Jesus questions. The Pharisees and Sadducees asked Jesus questions. Uh, the prophets in the Old Testament and the apostles in the New Testament asked God questions. So if they can ask we, we should be able to ask. We're covered by the blood of a Holy Spirit, God. And we know that Jesus and what his sacrifice and what he did on that cross uh, really broke the veil, tore the veil. And now we have full access, immediate access to the Father through the Son. And now we have the guidance of Holy Spirit, God. Amen. So we have the full package as a believer. Really, we don't, we don't lack nothing. Only thing we lack is the things that we probably think we want and that we don't need. And that's why heaven is a beautiful place because heaven, there's not going to be any lack. You know, lack causes people to sin. Before, when I was in the world, if I lacked money, I'd go out and do something to go get that money, legal or illegal. If I was lonely and I lacked friendship or I lacked companionship, I would do things to alter that um, my way just to get that fulfilled in my life. But since I got saved, now I know that there's a difference between wants and needs. Now, if you need it, the way this Bible study is titled, if you need it, I'm here to tell you, you got it. You got it through the power of Holy Spirit, God. You got it through the power of the Word of God. Amen. And you got it right here in James chapter 1. But when you ask Him, God, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Very important. Why? Why? Because people are placing their faith in all kind of stuff right now. You know, people get rich. Oh, I, I don't need God now. I'm, or, or thank you, God, for the blessing now. You know, excuse me for I don't want to do kingdom work. I want to do me now because now I'm a multi-millionaire. People get distracted with money and money becomes their God. That's why God is saying specifically, but when you ask me, when you ask God, God is saying, be sure that your faith is in God alone, not faith in faith. I'm not one of those guys and evangelists that go out and say, have faith in faith. You know, name it, claim it. Amen. The power of God's word does that, not the power of God's people does that. You know, faith 
is a substance we, you know, some, something we believe in, someone we believe in. Jesus is faith. Amen. He's the substance of that which we believe to be done. But God has the final say of the direction of your faith or the size of your faith. Faith does matter. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. But we have to do something. You know, my pastor a couple of weeks ago said it like this. How about if you needed a job and you're praying and asking God for a job, asking God for a job, but you don't do anything. You're just praying that you get a new job. And God is saying, I'm going to give you a job, but don't you think you should be applying for it? Don't you think you should be setting yourself self up for the position? The Bible says we are already seated in heavenly places. If you grab that right now in your spirit, that means it's already done. But we need to walk into our blessing. We need to go through that open door. This is the season of open doors. I'm going to say that until 2020 comes, till the new year comes, from whatever time you listen to this. It could be a different year when you're listening to this or when you're watching this. But the next year, before the year is over, walk into your season of open doors. I don't like to date these lives. I don't like to date these podcasts because it's a now word, a live word, a living word. Amen. And that could, you know, go past my time, even on this earth. When I'm gone, the word of God will remain. The word of God will still be spoken. The word of God will still be effective. The word of God will still be active. Amen. From every single preacher, apostle, evangelist, prophet. Amen. Pastor, teacher, everybody who speaks the word of God. Amen. That word of God will never return void. That word of God will never fall to the ground and just stay there. That word of God will be active. For all eternity. And so Jesus comes back. That word of God still will be activated. Because then he will complete that word. Because he said he is coming back. And he's going, He's coming back for his, his church. Amen. The body of Christ. So be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty. Is as unsettled as a wave of the sea. That is blown and tossed by the wind. Unsettled. You, you know you're like. You know, one time now, Hicks, the rebuke part, you know, I was at a conference and me and my wife were having issues bearing children and the prophet was sent. A woman of God was sent and through that woman, God was speaking and the, the prophet said, hey, sometimes you're like up here with your faith and then you're down here with your faith. Then you're up here with your faith. And you're, I was unsettled. I was being way, you know, I was being tossed to and fro by the wind because of my um, I wasn't courageous enough to believe the word over my life, the prophetic word over my life. Because I thought, well, first of all, I don't deserve it. Number two, that's impossible. But I put it on me and I put it on our situation, not realizing that I was Xing out the word that was over my life. I was shortchanging. I was short circuiting, short circuiting the word over my life, if that's possible. You know what I mean? I was taking out what God had said and replacing it with my unbelief, with my lack of courage and with my just trying to figure things out as a man. But then I realized when that prophetess came and spoke that word again, which she had no idea what I was dealing with with God, but God knew. So God sent somebody to remind me. And ever since that day, I was like, you know what? If God said it, it's done. It didn't matter if it didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen. It didn't matter if it happened after the fact or before the fact. It What matters is if God said it over your life and he said over my life, it shall happen. So what is it? What is it that you want? What are you asking about? If you need it, you have it. If you need it, you have it. You just have to believe in what God already has spoken. And now the promises of God, I challenged people before, I think it was a couple of weeks back, every single promise that you see in the word of God, start jotting it down, write it down. This is a season of open doors, write it down and then say it over yourself, save it over your family, say it over your finances, say it over your health, say it over every single part of your life because it's God's reputation, not my reputation. I'm not, I'm a, it's God's reputation. It's God's word that's alive and active, sharpening any double-edged sword, able to pierce. It's God's word. It's God's son, the living word that came from heaven to earth, bankrupt heaven, came to this earth that he created to show us the way, the truth, and the life because he actually said it was him, Jesus. Also, every single word, every single promise, every single uh, prophet, amen, that was endorsed by God, everything 
came to pass. And there's still things to, to come to pass. Jesus on the cross settled, I think, over 300 prophecies right there on the spot when Jesus came to earth and died on the cross. And then he rose from the dead. See, we don't serve, as Christians, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. We don't serve uh, a dead corpse. We don't serve an idol that, we don't serve a man that just died and you could go to see his bones somewhere. You will never find the bones of Jesus Christ. I know people have been searching probably all their lives for centuries now. Where's the body? All we got to do is find the body and get this whole Christianity thing out the water. And they're right. All you had to do is find the body and just parade the body around and say, look, this is the Jesus that they said rose from the dead. But guess what? That never happened. Never will happen. When he comes back, though, he's going to crack the sky. And I'm praying and I'm hoping that you're on the right side of things by that time. It could happen tonight. could happen tomorrow. It's going to happen, though. Amen. I just can't tell you when. Can't tell you the exact date. I can't say news at 10. You know what I mean? God said he's coming back. Jesus said he's coming back. So I believe... I tend to believe in a man who died and rose from the dead and said he's God. I tend to believe in that. I tend to trust in a person like that. His name is Jesus, if you were asking. Amen. Do not waver for a person with divided faith, uh, with divided loyalty, is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. So what is the one thing you must be sure of, first of all? What do you think you have to be sure of concerning this scripture? Think about it. What is it? You have to be sure. Well, scripture says it here. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. But what is it? What is the one thing you must be sure of according to James chapter 1 verses 5 and 6? Now, if I didn't know the answer already, because I do know the answer, uh, I just want to give you time. Think about it. Ask your friend, ask your husband, ask your wife, ask your children that question because according to this, he wants to, God is making sure of one thing, that we're placing our faith in him, not in things, not in an idol, not in a, a fad, not in a, a, a gospel artist or a rapper or you know a popular person or a preacher or a teacher or a pastor or apostle. He said no, specifically, he said, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. God alone. You know, in my life, when it, when prophets would come, I would listen and I would like, wow, that, that's, that has to be from God, you know. But they're gone. They leave. Sometimes I don't see them no more. But the word stands. And when those things happen, a young prophet prophesied to me um, years ago that this was going to be, you know, uh, riches put at my feet, gold and silver. In other words, that someone was going to bless my life and bless my ministry. He said it verbatim. Didn't happen the next year, the following year. It's five. It happened like almost 10 years later. But as soon as it happened, God reminded me of the prophecy. When the brother came to my house with all this stuff to bless my family, the prophet and his prophecy, I was reminded about it like right away. And I said, Wow disconnected me with that prophecy and if and it happened is that my timing is like i'm puerto rican i want everything now i don't know about you but if you know if i see a word i want it now but god knows the perfect timing he's not going to give me everything that is prophesied over my life all in one shot because then he knows me more than i know myself i'll probably tend to like be so distracted that i'll stop what god has asked me to do here on this earth to make a difference. There's somebody listening right now that needs this word. There's somebody right now that needs to get this word via a share or maybe a comment. There's somebody right now that's going to watch this later on and be like, you know what? I was just thinking the same exact thing. There's somebody out there that says, you know what? I was thinking about this whole Jesus and Christian thing. And, you know, this question is really making me think more and more about it. How do I know that? Because God told me that was going to happen according to what he said in his word, according to what he spoke to me through prayer. And when I'm listening to God, um, I believe him because I can hear his voice. Some people say, this, you know, it's impossible to hear God's audible voice. Well, it's not impossible for me. As a matter of fact, his voice sounds like my voice. Only thing, every time I hear it speaking to me, it's something I don't want to do, something that I think I can't do, or something that I know I should do. And he's reminding me that 
go ahead and do it. Green light. You know, when God gives me the green light, it's, it's so much more powerful in my life than if I give myself the green light. If I have an idea that's my idea, then that means I could do it. It's not as powerful as an idea that God gives me, and I know I can't do it without him. See, this whole thing is an inside job. This whole thing, being a Christ follower and a Christian, is so beautiful. But at the same time, you have to be brave. You have to have courage. Remember in the Old Testament, B, Joshua chapter 1, I think, in verse 8. In Joshua, the book of Joshua, somewhere in there, I think it was 818. Be courageous. You know, don't be afraid. You know, go after it. You know, every everything in the word, meditate on my word, and, and then you will be successful. God has already been telling us that all, all through the scriptures be courageous. Do what God said to do, even though it seems impossible. It seems we're out, like we're outnumbered sometimes, but we're not. Me plus God is the majority. You plus God is the majority in any situation you might be facing. What do you think is the most important thing to pray for? And the other question was, what is it? What is the one thing to be sure of? Right here with your brother, DJ Samra. God bless you. God keep you. And remember, God is good. Peace.